a beautiful sunset here on the West Coast. The Auto Club Speedway site of Sunday night's 500-mile race, the Pepsi 500. Brian Vickers joining us here on a little Friday night get-together. Hey, Steve. Yes, sir. You know, right quick, seeing the, the sun kind of start down like it is right now, I was just thinking, our producer, Mark Smith, he said maybe we ought to go out rattlesnake hunting later on this evening, see if we can catch some what? rattlesnakes. What do you, I, look, I got an idea. Sounds Why good. don't you jump out of an airplane on a desert yep. and go find a snake? How's that sound for a player? <laughs> And while you're yeah, doing that... You know that, what's funny, though? When, when you said rattlesnake... The three stooges over here. No, listen. He was talking about rattlesnakes. I looked over, and Elliot's going like this. And Vickers is going, yeah. no rattlesnakes. <laughs> hey, you know what I haven't done yet? Um, and, it, and if you like skydiving, I like skydiving. Mm -hmm. We both like flying in stun planes. Yep. What I haven't done that you like is bull riding. Okay. He also likes... Yeah, you can go 3.7 seconds with a bull named Fu Manchu. Man yeah. <laughs> I haven't tried that yet. That, I, and I love riding horses, so maybe that's my come next on, thing. Come on, we can, we can get you hooked up. He also up. like roping goats and things like that. Whoa, no, I don't go, I don't go with the sheep thing. I don't no. go with the sheep thing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't either, but they seem to think I do. That's our next guest coming up, Elliot. Can Elliot. you ask him a racing question? Yes, I can. Okay. The thing Why is, start now? <laughs> <laughs> this is a weld oil machine. Yes, it is. The thing is right now, all these guys are talking about, you know, how good you are this year. You haven't given up on this chase thought, have you? No, I haven't. You know, and it's, it's um, you know, I mean, obviously I know that we have a big hill to climb. We've only got two races left. But, uh, you know, you can gain 100 points in one race if you have a good good day and a couple guys have a bad day. And, you know, we're not, we're, 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 um, we're far back. But, you know, we've still got to think like we're in it because as soon as we think we're out of it, then we're definitely out of it. I mean, You've been in that position. I have before. been in that position, yeah. All you got to do is go out, like I say, if you win this race and the guy that's in 12th happens to lose an engine and the other guys kind of stumble a little bit, I mean, everything can get a whole lot closer because we've discussed this several times and Steve has brought out, you know, the, the top one through five can get locked in, but you said seven through 12 could fall out. Absolutely. And, and like, you know, I mean, you, you've been, you, uh, was it 2004, you won, yeah. won the race and got, your, got in the chase, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It can happen. How, how many points out were you at, at coming into California? I think we were like right on the bubble, but it, it yeah. locked us in. But we yeah. were out for like a lot of the races coming up to it. It can yeah. happen. You can put yourself in that position. That's what we're just talking about. Give your chance, yeah. yourself a chance to win it. Just don't give yourself a chance to lose it. Exactly. Like Absolutely. Well, yeah. look, how much has A.J. Allmendinger, an 84 car, since they put him back in it? He's running great now every yeah. single week qualifying. How much has that helped the 83 team? Now you got two sets of notes coming home, two sets of competitive yeah. notes and everything to learn during the race. Has that help? Is you guys kind of feeding off that? Well, it's definitely helped, you know, having two cars in the race, you know, obviously helped, uh, you know, compared to a lot of the situations we were in last year. And, um, you know, and Jimmy Ellis coming on board has really, really helped more than anything. That, that, that team, uh, you know, I've never really worked with him. I've known him for a while, long time. A lot of you guys have a good guy. Uh, he's really brought a lot of knowledge to the team and, and really brought a lot of uh, good ideas, some stuff that, a lot of stuff that we've used. You know, Brian, when, when you were in high school, you, you were really mixing high school in your race. And I remember, I think, Lowe's Motor Speedway, you were going back and forth for your graduation. Yeah. In fact, you missed your high school prom because you were racing at Bristol. But the thing that I was impressed when I looked at your bio is even with all that mixing up, you had a 4.43 grade average in high school. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive for a guy mixing it up with racing. Well, yeah, I guess everybody's kind of shaking their head like, how'd you get above a 4-0? Yeah, that's yeah, what I know. was. 4 was all I was looking well, for. Well, it is. Uh, in high, but when, when, you, when you take college courses. AP and, courses. Yeah, AP courses or college credits in high school, they count on a 5 scale uh, because of the, you know, extra challenge or, you know, it, because of what, yeah, what I, they I, are. Yeah, I, I knew that. I knew that. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, education and learning was always important. It's something that, that was always important to myself, important to my family, important to my parents. If I didn't maintain straight days, I wasn't allowed to race. Uh, so that made it even more important because I was really passionate about racing. And, uh, you know, and, and I, just, I just enjoyed learning, to be honest with you. I really did. <laughs> I'm curious. If, I'm, I bet if no, you I'm added all curious. four of our grade point averages, wouldn't be a four no, point See, four. the whole thing is right now, I was getting ready to say, you guys look at me and call me stupid for jumping out of airplanes. That man right there is an educated individual, and he still jumps out of <laughs> yeah. airplanes. Brian, we were somewhere uh, earlier this year, and somebody was interviewing you for one of our shows, and, and it really caught me off guard because 
you know, in this racing business, we get so focused on what happens inside that track. And, and you made a comment about, uh, I don't know if it was the price of gas, but it was like, whoa, I mean, this, this guy has a social conscience. I, I was really, I don't remember what it was, but it really yeah. caught me off guard. It was probably the whole, uh, what, the only thing that I, it's rare that I speak out in public. Um, I'm very passionate about a lot of things away from the racetrack. Um, the one time that I, that I did speak up pretty heavily was uh, the whole steroids and baseball thing. I, um, I don't, you know, you know, condone athletes to use drugs, um, nor in, nor in baseball or whatever it was anything. Um, but I really didn't feel that with all the problems we had with this country, the economy, the war in Iraq, that our Congress needed to be dealing with it. Right. I, I, I think that was <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. That was just absolutely ridiculous. That's a major league baseball issue. You guys need to go to work and do what you were, what you were, um, you know, hired, elected to do. Yeah. I know one other thing he was a little vocal about, the lineup before that last restart at the June Michigan race. He was a little vocal about that. Too. Yeah, <laughs> I was a little vocal about that one as well. Well, it's an election year, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have more with Brian Vickers coming up a little bit later. David Reagan joins us here on Trekside Live presented by Rangler.